Hi, my name is Chelsea Gardner, and I'm going to be doing my third and final blog on Drown by Juno Diaz. The two characters that this short story focuses on are Junior, and he is a high school drug dealer who doesn't see much prospect for himself. And then the second character that it focuses on is Beto, and he is also pretty rebellious, but his focus is on getting out of their town and going to college. This story has a lot of flashbacks are embedded into it that demonstrate Beto's and Junior's relationship, and those flashbacks eventually tell us why Junior is avoiding Beto. Some of the flashbacks involve Junior and Beto shoplifting, swimming at the pool at night, and other encounters between Junior and Beto. The first quote that I want to start talking about is, he's a pato. And pato in this quote refers to a gay man. And we find out that Beto is homosexual right away. Actually, it's in the third line of the story. And I think it's interesting that Junior uses this line to describe Beto before anything else. It's like the first thing that comes to his mind when thinking about Beto, so you know that it's always present on his mind. And then we also get the sense that Junior is trying to avoid Beto throughout the story, but we aren't sure why at first, but we find that later through the flashback that I mentioned earlier. The second quote that I want to address is, he was stronger than me and held me down until water flooded my nose and throat. And in this quote from the passage, it gives imagery of almost drowning which is interesting because the title of this short story is Drown. And Beto is the one who is holding Junior's head under the water or doing the drowning. And I think this part of the passage is important because throughout the story, we get the sense that Junior is being drowned figuratively by Beto. There are two encounters between the boys that are arguably the most important of the story. And both involve Beto and Junior getting sexually intimate. When he reached into my shorts, what are you doing? I asked, but he didn't stop. This quote is from Beto and Junior's first sexual interaction. And Beto is the one who initiates this. I think it's interesting to see how Junior reacts. Of course, he is startled at first, but he doesn't do anything to make Beto stop. Instead, he just lets it happen. I think this indicates that Junior is curious and possibly questioning his sexuality. After this encounter, Junior is confused and avoids Beto for a while. Then the two start hanging out again, and this leads to the second sexual encounter. I'll stop if you want, he said, and I didn't respond. I think the fact that Junior didn't respond tells me two things. First, that he isn't telling Beto to stop, which means he wants it to continue, and second, that he isn't verbally saying that he wants Beto to continue, maybe because he's embarrassed that he enjoys it. I think there is also a third attempt to get sexually intimate, or maybe it was just a continuation of the second and I misread it. But someone startles them and Junior is too afraid to continue or try again, and I think this scare is what drives Junior to avoid Beto. We also find out that Junior's father abandoned him and his mother for another woman in Florida. I think it's safe to say that Junior has had father issues ever since, and maybe that's why he is venturing out sexually, because he is looking for a strong male figure. I think Junior is suffering from a sexual identity crisis throughout this story. He wants to be with Beto, but in the neighborhood they're from, it wouldn't be accepted. And we get this image from the following quote. He puts his head out the window again. Eat me then. Junior's friend is shouting this towards the gay bar along with other obscenities. And we get the sense that Junior's friends don't think too highly of homosexuals. Overall, I like this story and I thought it made for an interesting read. I'm excited to hear your interpretations. Thank you.